Hello and welcome to our episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and I've got another cool unboxing for you guys. So I finally did it. I managed to pick up a Mecha Godzilla figure from Playmates, one of the big ones here in Australia. Oh boy, I know in a few other places apparently these things have been out for a while, even in Australia, but for me, they, they're not showing up anywhere in stores. So the deal is, Kmart are putting out these Playmates figures, and the Godzilla vs. Kong figures have been out forever now, but no Mecha Godzillas. I recently managed to actually get one of the smaller versions. They still haven't shown up in physical stores, but they kind of have been showing up online for half reasonable prices here and there. But the big ones were no, nowhere to be seen for a while until they finally showed up on popculture.com. So if you guys live in Australia and you're trying to find one of these things, that's the place to look at the moment. So finally got him as well as a few other knickknacks from there and we're gonna basically do a little unboxing together and have a look at these things so no point dawdling let's tear off the pop culture branded green tape which uh, we all know and love at least us collectors here in Australia who shop from them there we go so I just got a tax invoice for a list of bunch of stuff on it and the box is open upside down, but that doesn't matter because the first thing we see is... Oh, this thing is huge. Yes. The Mecha Godzilla itself. Nice. Okay. Instantly. Instantly I'm much more impressed with this thing than the little 6-inch versions. So this is the... Giant Mecha Godzilla. I think uh, with the Godzilla and Kong from the movie, they did giant versions, and then they, which are about like 11 inches and or, or 10 inches or something, and then they did the 12 inch or 13 inch like huge version. So I think this is just the kind of the medium version technically, but yeah, still looking really huge. And detail wise, this thing is looking so much more crisp and nice than the little six inch version. Just like I said, detail wise, looking real nice. Got our big, big Mecha Godzilla. All the same proportions as the little six inch one, but just looking so much more chunky. Around the back, got a cool shot of this weird Mecha Godzilla. I'm still, again, like I say in all these videos, kind of on the fence about this Mecha Godzilla design. I kind of feel like it maybe looks a little bit too tr Michael Bay Transformery. At the same time, there's a lot about this design that I do like. So I'm on the fence. Regardless, I still want to, some cool figures of this thing, and this one seems, yeah, a lot more decent than what we've gotten so far. Let's take him out, see what he's like. So as always, we just got some zip ties. I'm just gonna haphazardly cut these and hope that he comes out of the box without much issue. All right, I think that should do. Yep, he comes out. This I can put away for now. But yeah, just to show you guys, Giant Mecha Godzilla, my Playmates toys. Yeah, from the movie Godzilla vs. Kong, I should add. Ooh. Oh my god. I just saw this in the bottom of the box. <laughs> uh, I didn't even know this was a thing. Ah. So, looks like Pop Culture, the website that I bought this thing from, looks like they're actually putting out their own little pins. So that's kind of the mascot or logo thing from their website. This little weird hairy Sasquatch dude. And there we go, it's, it's made on a pin. So that's real nice. I was not expecting to get that, because I've uh, bought from them a number of times, and I guess they kind of just randomly put this in as a little, um, yeah, extra little gift. So that's awesome, so thank you guys for that. That's a nice, nice little pin. I will put that in my collection somewhere. Okay, back to the figure itself. That was a nice surprise. I'm glad I didn't miss that, because it was just at the bottom of the box, and I was about to put it down and away. Oh, man. Anyway, back to this. The tail actually is segmented in a number of bits. And 
Okay, there, we got in the right position. The, all the red bits lined up. And I'm assuming we just plug this into here. So just a little uh, solid plastic plug just into there. And that should very squeeze in. There we go. Nice. Okay. We got our full giant Mechagodzilla figure put together. And I'm digging it. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't seem to have nearly as much articulation as even the little one. That's a bit of a bummer. Because one of the things I really, really enjoyed about the little one here is that in particular his arms and his legs, they had a nice amount of articulation. There's a detail work on him is pretty there. It's really mushy and soft in a lot of places. But this really made up for it, that you could, you know, articulate this thing all around like that. The ball joints in here, I, I was really digging that. And it, as well as in the legs here, I thought that was great. Although, he does have a, a tough time standing. It, it does make his uh, body really wobbly. And his kind of rubberized tail, which doesn't really hold any poses. It doesn't have a bendy wire in it, I think. It's just rubber. That doesn't really help very much either. So I was really looking forward to this big version because I figured they would still have that articulation in there, but it would be more firm because they have a bigger figure to work with to kind of make it, you know, better. But no, it looks like it's just like we got a bit of a a bit of a swivel in his feet here, which is good. That's something. His arms they move up and down like this in a very you know, ironically, robotic motion. And even though it looks like this is a big joint here, yeah, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't move his arms out or anything, which is a, you know, a bit of a wasted, a bit of a waste because this, this shape is so perfect at a joint because it's an actual robot instead of an organic figure. So that's a little bummer. But he does have articulation in his hands, which I do really like. They kind of wobble up and down like this, the wrist and open like that so that's a plus uh, none in the head so his mouth doesn't really move which is kind of a bummer but I guess it's a little bit better than the kind of awkward jaw that I I think this one has because when you kind of try and open and close it on the uh, six inch version I thought it really looks weird kind of the angles at which it opens and closes it just doesn't really it's hard to explain but it just doesn't look super organic which is again ironic since it is a robot but you guys know what I mean so aside from the fact that there is some articulation kind of wasted potential let's say rather than issues what do I think of this thing yeah I'm digging it I'm digging it there's the paintwork I do really like that the red is a lot more minimal on the on this guy I do like that he's got the silver the spines here as opposed to just the bright red like this guy here because that's not accurate this is all more accurate so it's more reserved with that red there but I'm not really a fan of this sort of flat gray tone that they actually use across the rest of this guy's body uh, I do much much prefer the slightly more silvery color that the Bandai vinyl went with I still think this one overall might be my favorite version of this Mechagodzilla because it does balance the detail work really well with uh, everything else but I do really like the size and the crispness of the detail on the big guy here so let's just actually go through that together What's the face of this guy with the little tiny beady red eyes his weird sort of looking mouth with uh, just that really broad shaped jaw so yeah very typical of this design it's really weird looking again. It's very transformery, and it kind of I've, I've still been on the fence about it, but uh, it is it does capture this design pretty well. I still think the head is slightly too big on these Playmates figures. The proportions look a little bit off, especially when you compare them with the Bandai vinyl, which I'll do later on. We'll kind of see that. In general, the proportions on this Mechagodzilla are weird. He's got like almost no neck to speak of I mean there is a neck obviously but you guys know what I mean he's got a very sort of bulky upper body with these huge arms and almost no lower body around here so it's kind of weird very weirdly proportioned that way it isn't the fault of this figure it's more more just the design itself 
detail and, and sculpt wise they actually did a really nice job they actually tr they actually put in a bit of that red in his body here so that's real nice of him to do that that no other figure seems to have actually put in the red there which is pretty cool and the the detail work across the rest of this body it's actually nicely sharply done you can see the crisp details on it I mean obviously it's still Playmates toy it does feel fairly cheap and you know mass produced and, and what you'd expect from like a Playmates figure but I feel like if somebody were to do a repaint of this guy which I've seen a lot of people do the crispness of these details would actually be brought out by some matte, matte uh, silver paint that would really help add a lot more depth and detail if you had like a yeah, nice proper matte silver paint and did a wash of black. That would look really cool. So there is a lot of detail work, especially even like behind the legs here. So kudos to them for actually putting that detail work and effort in. All, all these little details. Unfortunately, what I don't like is since you can't really articulate this guy, the, uh, the position of the legs and the arms and around the hips it, it feels really awkward and robotic I'd, I'd love to spread the legs out as if there was a ball joint here or or if these joints here if they were actually real joints that could move the legs out a little bit give them a slightly wider posture because he looks really um really odd like this but i do appreciate that there's a little swivel there yeah nice again nice details just all around that area now, unfortunately, I don't have the Playmates versions of Godzilla and Kong here with me to pair up with this guy because, again, as I mentioned in some of my other videos, I've recently moved, so not all my figures are in the same area. But I do have a few fairly equivalent figures that we can kind of pair this guy with. First, I'm going to bring in the Star Race Kong. So this is kind of like the uh, X-Plus version of the Kong from Kong Skull Island. And... They actually scale yeah, not perfectly. Uh, first of all, this Kong, this version of Kong, should be tiny. Like, um, <laughs> you know, about this big uh, <laughs> when, when next to this Mechagodzilla. So, you know, like right down here. Uh, but assuming this is the Kong from the Godzilla vs. Kong movie, uh, even this isn't quite right. So the, this Mechagodzilla is actually really huge. He seemed to be taller than both Godzilla and Kong. I'm not sure if that was just because of his posture or because it was actually kind of built bigger. But yeah, this Kong should be a little bit shorter. But this still gives you a nice sort of size comparison between just a figure in general. Another Mechagodzilla we can bring in, again, is the little 6-inch Playmates figure, which we've got his leg disfigured there, so just sort that out. Which again, I really dig the articulation on this one. I wish they would have implemented that on this thing that's kind of my biggest gripe with this thing so far but you can definitely see the size difference this one is a much more substantial piece of plastic this you feel like you're gonna have a lot more fun messing around with that than this little guy here which now that i look at it next to this thing really makes the detail work on this one look kind of sad especially on the face where it gets real mushy and like i brought in before we have the bandai movie monster series version of this guy which has so far been my favorite version of this Mechagodzilla in figure form for a number of reasons. One, the detail work is even for something this size on this thing is really great, especially for a Bandai vinyl, which tends to be a little bit more smooth and simpler looking. Uh, so the fact that they actually knocked these details out of the park on this thing is really impressive. They also had really accurate paintwork on them with just very subtle red on the tips of his spines there. And I like the silver they used on this thing. And also the pose on them is nice and dynamic. His tail looks more organic and is curved in a really nice way. And he's got this cool posture of his legs and his arms. And the proportions look a little bit more natural on this figure as well. His head seems to be about the right size and just in general the proportions seem just a little bit better. However, I don't know, this guy's big, which does count for a lot. Uh, gets a lot of points for that. I know it's a really sort of um, basic thing, but that is really cool about this guy. And his hands are definitely much better on, on the Playmates version and the kind of weird crumpled up fists they kind of gave him on the Bandai vinyl, which if you've seen my review on unboxing of that one, you kind of know all about. So yeah, I may as well just bring in my X-Plus 
Kiryu figure, just to kind of give you another idea of how big this guy is. So Kiryu here is a bit taller than this guy, so this is a 30 centimeter tall X plus Kiryu. He is a fairly large 30 centimeters X plus figure, just in general. But this guy, this gives you an idea of these two together, and you can really see this kind of nicer, brighter silver uh, looks a lot more eye-popping, I'd say, especially in person than this kind of just gunmetal gray color they went for on this figure here, which, yeah, it's kind of sad they didn't even attempt to do a silver on this thing. They just went straight for the gray. Actually, now that I talk about it, for whatever reason, they did paint the tip of his tail here silver, but the rest of them, they left this sort of gray color, which is odd. And also, there's some odd misshapen shapes in his tail, especially around the joint here, which is why I was kind of looking at it a bit weird, where, for whatever reason, this block here is a little bit thicker. Like, all, all these should technically be in a more sort of, again, organic sort of shape and just kind of naturally go together, but this kind of block here looks really odd, where the tail kind of has a joint there. I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but like, that bit there is a bit too thick compared to the two next to it. So it's got a few odd little bits here and there. Yeah, still pretty cool. Anyhow, let's actually get to the rest of the stuff I got in the box there. I, I know this guy is kind of the main feature of the video, but I may or may not do a separate video on this thing if you guys are keen in the future. Although I say that about almost everything I unbox, and God, God only knows I almost never get to it. And we get a separate little pouch, which is nice with some graphic novels. So I decided since I needed a couple of extra things to get the price of this up high enough so that I could actually get free postage for this guy, because that's how, how this website works, Pop Culture. If you, if you spend enough, they'll, they'll let you have free postage. So I decided to buy a few extra do-wackies and I got some books. So, first of all, I got as many Monsterverse-related books that I was missing from my collection as I could. So we got uh, Monsterverse Titanfology, which is uh, some sort of a graphic novel, probably... Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's this one or some of these other ones here, but they, they should show the backstory of like Godzilla vs. Kong. Like, the Godzilla and Kong species have some history. So this one and or... These two other ones should cover that. So we also have Godzilla Domination and Kingdom Kong. All very similar looking books and all very similar looking art styles. So I'm not going to flick through too much, but already I, I'm digging the fact that these are all full color, fully illustrated graphic novels, which is very nice. And I will enjoy taking a look through those in due time. And finally, just this other quirky thing that I found on this site, which I was kind of interested in, is Kong on the Planet of the Apes, which apparently is a sequel to the original Planet of the Apes, where they discover basically King Kong still somehow existing, and it's this whole thing. It sounded fascinating, so I got a copy. I'm really curious how it's going to turn out, because apparently this is like a direct sequel to... Oh wow, there's like Skull Island and everything. <laughs> a direct sequel to the original Planet of the Apes, which is a fantastic movie, which I absolutely adore. And I'm a, obviously a huge Kong fan, so I just had to check this out. So yeah, I may or may not um, look into talking about these in the, the near future if you guys are also interested. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that is my little haul from pop culture today. And... My initial review and thoughts on the Playmates version of Mechagodzilla 2021, the giant version, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm really digging this thing. I wish these were so much easier to find, though. These This took forever, like I said, to become available here in Australia. So, yeah, really, really tricky figure to find. I wonder if this will act, these will actually ever show up in physical stores here, because up till till now I still haven't been able to find one. That's it for the video guys. Thanks for bearing with my crazy rambling and I hope to see you in one of my future videos. But until then, may all your vinyl be a radiated vinyl.